What's going on everybody, Gareth here with FCP Euro. Welcome back to another DIY video. Today, we're gonna to be installing brand new fuel injectors on this F3328i behind us. Uh, this is gonna be the same for any N20 or N26 power car. In this, we have four brand new fuel injectors and four decoupling elements. We also have this special tool from CTA to help pull the injectors out of the cylinder head since this is a direct injected vehicle. Uh, but with that said, it's a pretty simple job. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of the tools we're gonna need to do this and we're gonna get right into it. So some of the tools you're gonna need to remove the uh, fuel injectors and replace the fuel injectors on your N20 or N26 powered car, um, especially in the case of this F30, since we have to remove the windshield cowl gain access, we have a 10 millimeter socket, we have some of these uh, expanding rivet removal pliers. Uh, those are the minimum. You're also gonna have to remove the cross brace. So we have an E18 socket right here for that. Helps if you have an impact gun for removing those E18 bolts. Also have an electric ratchet just to make removal of some of those smaller fasteners a little bit quicker, but that's not necessarily required. You will need a 17 millimeter and a 14 millimeter wrench or flare nut wrench for the flare fittings for the uh, high pressure feed to the fuel rail. And you're also gonna need a 14 millimeter for the feed lines to the fuel injector since you have to remove the rail. Uh, E6, E8, um, external Torx sockets are needed. Also uses E6 ratcheting wrench as well for a couple of things. Um, a series of ratchets, so 3 8 drive to quarter inch, flathead screwdriver, angled pick are always useful. A torque wrench that can do uh, roughly 12 to 15 newton meters is recommended. Flashlight is always useful, uh, especially if you're working in a dark environment. Um, I use these adjustable pliers wrenches uh, for the ignition coil removal. Uh, there are drive sizes for the special tool, which is right here, uh, but these are basically just an adjustable wrench in a plier form. You are gonna need this injector puller in order to physically remove the injectors from the cylinder head. There is no other way to get around that. So CTA 7658 is the part number for that for the N20. You also are going to need to calibrate the new injectors to the DME, so you're gonna need a scan tool or, or uh, diagnostic equipment that is capable of overriding those compensation values on the injector uh, onto the DME. So in this case, we're gonna be using the Autel MX-808 because that's what we have here in the shop and it is capable of doing that service. And along with that, you're gonna want some shop towels or some rags for trying to capture as much of the fuel as possible when you go ahead and open up the uh, high pressure fuel injection system. Definitely want these. And also going to probably some safety glasses as well just to be safe. Uh, but with that said, let's go ahead and get right into it. There's actually just a lot of stuff in the way, including this cowl cover, but we're gonna start off with the uh, engine cover first which on the earlier N20s uh, has a vacuum canister uh, for your wastegate actuator. So we wanna make sure that we remove and disconnect uh, our vacuum lines. Wanna to try to avoid pulling as much as possible, there we go. Next up we have our sound insulation for the engine because these things sound pretty loud, a lot of ticking. All right, so next up, uh, basically to gain access to the top of the engine, we need to remove the cowl cover. Uh, so we're gonna do that next. It's this piece right here. I'm gonna go ahead and start removing it. It's gonna be held in with a bunch of these uh, style rivets like this. Some of these quarter turn fasteners up here. So just go about start removing those. Uh, but they should just be quarter turn. Once you turn it a quarter of the way, you should be able to just to uh, slowly start lifting it out of here. And then we also have these uh, expanding rivets. And so these Little pliers are really useful for getting these center sections out, like so. We also have this cross brace that I wanna remove and get out of here. And then there's this cover underneath, which looks like it's held in by a bunch of 10 mils, so I have to remove some more stuff. You have these access plugs here on the windshield cowl. They gain access to the e-torx bolts behind and you'll be able to unbolt the cross brace and pull it out. The four bolts that hold the cross brace in are E18s. Uh, next up, we want to remove this cover piece here. It's held in by several 10 millimeter fasteners. Now we just go ahead and pull this right out and that gives us full access to the top of our engine. The grounds for the ignition coil harness are eight mils. Can you 
got this mounting bracket here in the rear. It's held by, it's held down by a couple of E6 uh, screws. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these. We're gonna need these this out of the way so that we can gain access to the uh, low pressure feed line and the high pressure feed line for the uh, fuel system. So to give you a visual of what I was doing there, it's deceptive. You have these sort of tabs on the side and those look like those maybe the locking releases. The locking release is actually in the front here. So I just took this pick, went down between the injector connector and pushed it down. That pushed it out, which released the little lock tab on the connector that sits right there. I was just able to pull the connector out nice and easy. It's deceptive because you would think that, you know, this right here is a lock. It's not. Really don't know what that is. I think it's just there to mess with you. Word of caution when opening up a high pressure fuel system. Uh, there's gonna be some pressure in there. You wanna slowly crack the lines. You wanna have the line covered with a rag. Uh, in this case, these flare nuts are 17 mil. Uh, right here, this is our high pressure feed line going to the fuel rail. I'm gonna release pressure from here first. And you know, you're gonna hear fuel coming out, but the key here is just keep a rag over the top while you're loosening this. Engage those safety squints. Actually, truthfully told, it wouldn't hurt to wear safety glasses at the same time. Keep the, keep the line covered, keep a rag over it, and uh, wear some safety glasses. You don't want high pressure fuel to shoot you in the eye. We're gonna release the line from up here, 17 again. There should be no pressure in the high pressure fuel rail anymore since I released it from the high pressure side of the fuel pump. As you can see, fuel did come out of the fuel rail. It wasn't under any kind of pressure. That was just fuel that was sitting in the rail. Uh, so just basically emptied back up. Keep a rag there, try to soak it up. Next up, we're gonna be removing the uh, low pressure feed for the high pressure fuel pump. This is not as uh, much of a problem in terms of the potential for fuel to spray, uh, but do expect some kind of fuel to uh, come out. So try to capture as much of it with a rag as you can. Part of this, we need to remove our high pressure fuel rail. Uh, it is held down by two, uh, two caps. They're both held down by two E8, E8 torque screws. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those. Then we'll disconnect the feed line to the fuel injectors and we'll get the uh, high pressure fuel rail out of the way. Use a 14 millimeter wrench to crack the feed lines for the Fuel injectors should come loose pretty easily. They're not really that tight. There's gonna be some fuel that leaks out. All you can really do is try to get as much of it as you can with a rag. You don't have to worry about pressure at this point because we already opened the high pressure side and relieved any pressure that could be there. So we're good on that front. All right, those are loose. And we're gonna go ahead and put our fuel rail off to the side here. You can leave it connected, it's fine. So now that we removed the high pressure feed for the high pressure injectors and everything else, we now have access to the 10 millimeter hold downs or for, for the injector hold downs. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove them. We're actually gonna replace all injectors on this engine. There's nothing wrong with them technically. And you can replace individual injectors on this engine, uh, but you might as well replace all of them at the same time. So the injector puller is actually a super simple tool and it is necessary for this job because what happens is the Teflon seal on the tip of the injector on the cylinder head, it expands over time. And also the taper of the injector sort of forces it into the bore in the cylinder head. Uh, so having these puller tools really, really helps. Otherwise, I don't really see how the hell you'd go about getting these injectors out. Um, but basically, it just uses the 
factory points on the cylinder head that would be normally used for holding the tie down or the hold down in place. And instead, you're threading these into place. These are reverse threaded. So once they bottom out to remove them, you just thread them in the other direction. This threads onto the end of the injector. And then you basically thread them back out, up, out of the hole down there. And it pulls the injectors out mechanically. Super simple tool, uh, but really necessary for this job. And to install this onto the injectors, you want to kind of leave everything loose uh, until it all lines up. The last thing you want to do is force any of this stuff to go together. And now that we have the pullers um, locked onto the injectors, we'll just tighten this down. This is essentially taking place of the um, injector hold downs. And now, because these are reverse threaded, we're going to start turning this nut here and it's going to start pulling the injectors out. And you're probably going to hear some noises as the injectors are breaking free, uh, but that's normal. And uh, you know, once they break free, they come out super easy. You have to install the coupling elements onto the new injectors. Uh, they look like this. You're going to see there's like this uh, seam right here. The seam faces up, so this flat area is going to go and slide upwards like this. And you should just be able to push them on by hand. You do want to write down the calibration number for each injector that's being installed in each cylinder. Uh, sometimes you'll get a batch of injectors where the calibration number is all the same. So in this case, this one injector is 215. Uh, so what you want to do is for every single cylinder, write down the calibration number. Uh, because after you install them and reinstall everything for the fuel system, you'll want to go ahead and calibrate the DME to those new uh, flow adjustments. And you want to make sure you have that now instead of later if you put everything back together because you're not going to have that information and you're going to be upset with yourself. So make sure you write that down. Make sure you write which numbers for which cylinder. If all the numbers are the same, that's great. You don't have to remember one number, uh, but just write down that number before you install. And then for the two hold down bolts, torque spec is 10 newton meters. Now that we got the injectors tight to the fuel rail, we we'll reinstall this retaining or these retainers uh, for the fuel rail. These are held on by E8 Torx bolts. So reinstalling the uh, high pressure feed line from the high pressure fuel pump to the fuel rail. Again, this is uh, 13 newton meters plus or minus three, AKA you're just gonna snug it up with a wrench if you do not have a crow's foot. 
the key on these is not to kill it because it's the it's the flare fitting on the line that makes the seal and while we're there we're going to reinstall our injector connectors in terms of which one goes where you know injector number one is the forward portion injector number two is the rearward so kind of logical in terms of which one goes where you'll hear them kind of click into place and then for our ignition coils similar situation they kind of just go the direction they want to go so it's just a matter of just plugging them back in you know make sure that the connector fully seats and then put the lock down lock tab down and then we'll reinstall our ground So what I want to do is I want to code the injectors and start the car and check the leaks. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, calibrate the injectors using the MX-808 scan tool. Uh, we're going to go to service, we're going to go to injector, and then under injector we're going to select BMW. It's going to run a diagnostic program. The car needs to be on for this, not, not running, but powered on. And we're gonna let the scan tool uh, read the VIN for the car. So I'm gonna tell it to read. It's gonna read the VIN if it's communicating, which, uh, okay, that's the VIN. Uh, it's gonna give me some basic information about the car. I'm gonna say yes, because it's correct. And uh, it's gonna go ahead and read the control unit information. Uh, so right now it's gonna give me the option for diagnosis or a hot function. I'm gonna go to hot function. And uh, you're gonna have two options. You can, uh, number one, determining the injectors. Um, this would be used for determining whether you have EU5 or EU6 injectors. So right here it says the engine requires EU5 injectors. We already know that. We're going to do an injector or an injection quantity compensation, uh, which is going to read information from the DME. So now it's going to give me 244, 267, 274, 245. I'm going to hit continue. Should the adjustment values from a replaced engine controller be adopted? Uh, no, because we didn't replace a engine control unit. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to enter new adjustment values, which is F4. And it's going to give me the option for which cylinder, 1 to 4, should the new value be entered. It's going to be number 1. Enter. Okay. 2, 1, 3. Okay. Yes. Number 2. Enter. Okay. 2, 3, 3. Enter. Okay. Three, enter, okay, two, one, five, okay, four, enter, okay, two, three, seven, enter, okay. Save adjustment values, F2. So we got, are the following values to be stored permanently? So we have 213. We'll look at the numbers again. 213, 233, 215, 237. 1, 2, 3, 4. That matches the information we wrote down. Yes, we're going to store the information permanently. We're going to let this thing do its work. Uh, there's a little note here. So difference of plus or minus 1 between the printed injector value and the stored value is due to rounding differences in the engine control unit. It's not a fault. So basically, if you enter these numbers and you see that they're slightly different than the numbers you entered, it's totally fine. It's basically just a compensation that the DME is determining based on different information. Uh, so yeah, went ahead, programmed the new injectors. And if we just wanted to do a quick check, we can read out those injector values. 213, 233, 215, 237, perfect. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and start the car. We're gonna check for leaks, make sure there's no faults. Uh, it's probably gonna take a minute for it to start just strictly because we emptied the fuel injection system from the high pressure pump to the injectors. Primo start. No leaks. So there's no leaks, we can kill the engine. We'll check for fault codes. This thing sounds terrible without the insulation over the top of the engine. But welcome to four cylinder direct injected cars. Literally that's how loud these things are without that foam cover on top. So after doing this job, 
uh, before you put everything back together and you put the engine cover back on, uh, go ahead and start the car. Check for leaks. Obviously at the fuel feed lines and at the fuel rail and at the high pressure fuel pump, you wanna make sure that there's no leaks before you put it back together and then find out later on. Um, also note that when you go to crank the, uh, the car, it's not gonna start right away. Obviously because the fuel system has been open, it's gonna take a little bit longer for the engine to start. Uh, basically the high pressure fuel pump being completely bone dry, it's gonna have to push out all that air before it can start. Um, so you're gonna notice that it's gonna take a little bit longer for it to start, that's totally normal. There's no special bleeding procedure for this. Just let the engine crank, it'll start. If it's taking too long, just hit the start button again uh, to basically stop the cranking. Then hit the start button again, and it'll probably start right up. Um, yeah, like I said, there's no bleeding procedure on this. You just have to let the fuel system bleed itself out. So uh, no big deal if you notice that crank's a little bit longer than normal. So at this point, we just put everything back together. For starters, we're gonna go ahead and put this noise insulation back on top of the engine now. It's probably gonna be the easiest time to do it. Cause this thing kind of sucks to put on when you've put everything back together. It is your choice as to whether you wanna leave this off or not. However, I do caution you that if you choose to leave off that uh, noise insulator, you're gonna hear a lot of injection noise inside the uh, passenger cabin. So if that's not something that you're willing to live with, put that back on. Next up, we have a bunch of 10 millimeter screws that secure this cover here in the rear. Next up, we're gonna reinstall our cross brace. We're gonna start all the bolts by hand. These are E18. We're gonna to torque these to spec. The reason for that is if you just run them down by hand, you do risk the chance of these loosening up over time and you're gonna hear a really terrible rattle. So I do recommend following the recommended uh, torque spec for those bolts. Torque spec for these is 56 plus 90. covers back on for the bolt access holes up here at the cowl cover windshield cowl. And I'm going to slide in these pieces here. Uh, make sure the locks are uh, basically twisted so they shouldn't be like that otherwise we're going to have a hell of a time trying to install this. And uh, when you're turning them, you'll kind of feel the lock and gauge is almost like a detent. If you don't feel anything, that means the uh, cover is not lined up with the uh, cowl cover there. And then we have this rubber gasket, which is kind of a pain to install, if I'm being honest. You have to make sure that uh, this groove here lines up with that all the way around. So it's just kind of a matter of pushing it into place and working it. Now I'll go ahead and reinstall the strut covers there and it kind of wraps around the seal here. So it should look like one cohesive piece when it's all back together. I got a self-expanding rivet that goes there. And now we got this cable that we need to put into this special channel that runs all the way across this gasket. Using a flathead screwdriver to pry that seal back also helps a little bit. And lastly, we're gonna reinstall the engine cover uh, because this is an external wastegate car. Do you need to hook up these vacuum connections back to the wastegate actuator solenoid and the wastegate or the wastegate vacuum supply? This is our supply line back here.
All right, so that's how you replace fuel injectors on an N20 or N26 powered BMW. A couple of things are gonna vary, such as you know the cowl removal and the strut brace removal, uh, but the actual process of removing the fuel injectors, installing the new ones, and coating the injectors are gonna be the same no matter what BMW that engine is installed in. Of course, you do need a couple of specialty tools. The injector puller is absolutely necessary. Uh, like I said during the video, I, I don't know how you would actually go about removing those injectors safely without the puller. And 100%, you do need to recalibrate the DME for the compensation values or the fuel flow rate on the injector. So outside of writing those numbers down and which cylinder has what injector, uh, it's a pretty straightforward process outside of the specialty tools, uh, but it's definitely something you can take on yourself. And as you can see, it's relatively straightforward and simple. We hope you learned something in this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comment box below. Hit that like button. Also hit subscribe, we got a lot more videos on the way. And as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.